Yan na, kamusta kay John, mga kameta? Yan, after uh, two days of break, of course, in the observance of yung uh, days of uh, solemn reflection, at of course, dun sa Black Friday at saka uh, Black Thursday, sabi natin, nag-break uh, muna tayo uh, sa politika, sa anything na pwede mag-distract sa atin sa mga bagay na hindi maganda para sa ating Soul, Now, with just few hours left before um, Sunday at uh, Easter, let me just say uh, advance happy Easter in sa lahat. I hope you have uh, made the most out of your time, out of your holidays to reflect on sa mga gusto niyo mangyara sa buhay, dun sa mga pagkakulang natin, dun sa mga imperfections natin, dun sa mga lessons and inspirations and motivations that we can get uh, dun sa mga... Uh, kay Papa Jesus, of course, or depende dun sa inyong faith, um, or at least yung time na you spent with your family loved ones, I hope you made the most out of it. Uh, as I said, you know, it's very, very important to always take stock of things, diba? Kung magasabi nga ni Plato, diba? A life not uh, contemplated upon is not worth living. So, yun ang importante. At of course, yun din yung dahilan na may Sabbath day po tayo. So, as you know, of course, tomorrow is also Sabbath day, so dapat wala rin tayo any kind of uh, uh, live or political commentaries. Uh, hindi ko alam dun sa mga ibang vloggers na kahit mga ho ho holy days or holy uh, holy week, tuloy-tuloy pa rin ang kanilang uh, ano, discussion sa politika. Pero tayo naman, alam mo naman, uh, we try to keep things uh, as much as possible in accordance to um, what at least I believe is, is you have to separate. There's a time for war, there's a time for vlogging, there's a time for peace, there's time for love. So it's very important you make that distinction. Anyway, let me just say first of all, advance happy easter sa inyong lahat and i hope uh, you know this this moments of reflection spiritual reflection uh, will give us the kind of strength and clarity that we need as we look forward no uh, to uh, what will look will most likely look like a very very intense year politically speaking at least no uh, among other things 
Now, as you know, um, there are a couple of things that have been, because uh, as much as possible, I, I, I don't post anything online, as you can see, but uh, at least, you know, once in a while, I have to monitor also what's going on. So, bong dalawang bagay nag dominate ng discussions over the past uh, few days. Uh, one is obviously itong bagong Pulse Asia survey na lumabas. Or actually, na um, na-leak pala. <laughs> Hindi pala siya official. Um, kasi yung isang official na uh, dinidistribute ng Pulse Asia is actually yung sa ano, ukol sa charter change at mukhang sobrang konti yung support for charter change. This is something that we'll discuss more uh, next week starting on Monday, God willing. Uh, also, there's a new survey na lumabas uh, sa Pulse Asia uh, kung saan it looks like not one but two Tulfos are more or less within the range for top 12 and as far as Erwin Tulfo is concerned he's really pulling ahead of everyone else even with a margin of error of 3 to 5 percent looks like Erwin Tulfo is still ahead of uh, immediate number two C senator former senate president Tito Soto so this is kind of a Tito Soto Tulfo Tito versus Tulfo kind of a fight for top top position in the senate uh, next year uh, now obviously this is not the first time that we see a Tulfo topping the surveys that was also the case uh, two years ago, except of course, uh, may tinatawag na Robin Hood Padilla. Alright, may itatago na lang natin sa pangalan na, no? okay. <laughs> so, yun yung surprise ng 2022 elections because everyone was expecting for, um, for Rafi Tulfo to top the race, but eventually it was Robin Hood Padilla out of nowhere, which raises the question of whether Digong and Bongo, who are tied at number three, uh, are in a position to to uh, pull off an upset. And I think should Ed Duterte or Bongo top the race next year, that's going to also have a lot of implications because that's going to give a lot of confidence to sa kampo ng mga Dutertes to say, we're not a spent political force. We're here. We're going to fight. And especially as more and more issues uh, regarding the ICC, regarding the West Philippine Sea, among others, are, are going to come on board. No, pag-usapan din natin yan very shortly. Um, now, if you look at it, yung mga lumalaban for the last few slots, it looks like Amy Marcos is more or less out of top five. Um, she's in the 16 to 13 slot. So there's actually a possibility that Amy Marcos might not even win a seat uh, next year's uh, 2025 Senate elections, which which tells you a lot about... Um, uh, let's just say yung backlash siguro sa kanyang strategy. Uh, because if you look at her strategy, first you had the uh, Made in Marites, I'm sorry, Made in Malacanang 1.1 1. 1 and 2. 2, di ko na pinatulan. Uh, 1 was more than enough for that kind of genre of movies and arts and history. Um, and then the whole thing, uh, of course, alam niyo na, Made in Marites was all about Shana. Shana. Shana ang pinakamagaling na anak ni Marcos Jr. Marcos Sr., sorry. Siya ang pinakamagaling na lahat siya na di ba siya na ang siya na ang sentro ng mundo no center of the universe no and then yung pagcriticize niya sa kapatid niya and then eventually what we saw is that um obviously it looks like she has alienated uh, the administration uh, if not you know the, the first family but also it looks like the Duterte's are not necessarily completely happy with them as we saw in the case of uh, case of Baste no? coming out and openly saying, oh, wag kang maghanash masyada, essentially, right? So these are things that we discussed before. So whatever I mean, Marcus was thinking about, which is sort of positioning herself for presidency or vice presidency in 2028, uh, I think realistically more vice presidents. I heard first now there were plans down uh, uh, to run for mayor of Manila. Uh, as I said, base dun sa pag ko, Solid pa rin yung uh, kasalukuyan na administration sa Manila. And uh, my sense is if Amy Marcos uh, is, was really in a driving, driver's seat dun sa race sa Manila, I won't be surprised if Isko Moreno would have considered to run again for mayor of Manila. Except the interesting thing is actually both Isko Moreno and Amy Marcos are statistically tied. Both of them pasok sa uh, actually not exactly magic 12 kasi pwede rin mag number 13 sila. But more or less within the range sila for, for top 12, right? Uh, so that's quite interesting. And then, this is quite, this is even more interesting. Tied si Ben Tulfo kay Aimi Marcos at saka kay, kay Isko Moreno, right? Which tells you a lot about ito talaga mga Tulfos talaga. They're, they're way, well on their way to build their own political dynasties uh, as, as things go. But as I said, you know, 
uh, they are all Tulfos, but you know, from broader to broader, di different dynamics. I don't think Ben Tulfo is the same uh, political, um, uh, you know, element, species, whatever you want to call it, as Erwin Tulfo. And I think Rafi Tulfo is also a very different, different kind of Tulfo. Nevertheless, this is yung tatak Tulfo. Nakikita natin malakas pa rin at lakas pa rin ang dating niya. Um, Lito Lapit, medyo pasok. Um, Willie Revillame, medyo pasok. Willie Ong, medyo pasok, pero risky pa rin. Up to 16, 17 pa sila. And then, more or less, andun din si Pangilinan and Ralph Recto. Uh, but, uh, looks like things are a bit tough for, 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 um, for the opposition. Uh, Lenny's down the list, so it's really Kiko and Bam who are quite competitive for this. Mukhang labas din ng mahirapan din si Francis Tolentino for re-election. Um, Hongi Bochadoro, despite all of his, I would say, very encouraging positioning that the West Philippine Sea will also be in top position. And then I don't see Harry, Harry, see the ex-human rights lawyer, medyo wala siya dito. I think they're also slightly going to be difficult for, I think, Jokno, um, Trillianes, um, among others, including also Abalos, Benjamin Abalos, who uh, was in many ways the the uh, the uh, the engine of organization, the the conciliary of the current president. So this is a very tough, very tough Senate race, which we'll discuss even more um, in the coming days. Hopefully next week. Um, so we post that later on next week. Hopefully, dito para makita niyo talaga yung breakdown. Obviously. Uh, Pulse Asia is not the only one in town. We are going to look at also other surveys by Okta, also other authoritative surveys, just to give an idea. But what we see consistently is Erwin Tulfo coming on top. And, and he's, even with a margin of error, 3 to 5%, well ahead of everyone else. So we have one more, another race whereby Tulfo, once again, is a front runner. So that tells you a lot about anong hinahanap ng taong bayan or ano yung pag-intindi ng ating mga kababayan dun sa trabaho ng Senado. All right. So, siguro yung, yung concept nila ng isang fiscalizer, isang lumalaban para sa ustisya, ay hindi katulad ni Jock, no? who's a constitutional law expert, but it's someone like mga Tulfos. Because the interesting thing is that Ben Tulfo, who unlike Erwin Tulfo, has no background whatsoever in political office. In fairness, kay Erwin Tulfo, at least, he spent some time in the DSWD. And as I can say, based on uh, my observation, based on conversations with him, based on interviews with him, etc., I don't think he did bad. I think he did pretty decently and was quite proactive in responding to different crises uh, dun sa kanyang uh, termino bilang uh, DSWD secretary. So I, I, I won't blame if people actually see a lot of hope and a lot, a lot of proactiveness in Erwin Tulfo. Ibang usapan siguro Ben Tulfo, we can also talk about that later on. Are both of them gonna run? Likely. Uh, may nagsabi sa akin na bati si Mon Tulfo ay gusto magposition na. But I think three is a little bit too much. Three is a crowd. Two is a bit doable. Three is a crowd. Um, so pag-usapan natin yan, guys. Uh, don't worry about it. Ipa-flash natin yung mga surveys, implications. Kasi I think within the next three to five months, we'll have an idea about who are really uh, more or less, uh, uh, you know, shoe in uh, dito sa, sa Senate race. And then how difficult and competitive it's going to be for the opposition. As I said, this is likely the most difficult. This is likely the most difficult. Um, this is going to be the most difficult Senate race. So, so kudus dun sa mga uh, membro ng tunay na opposition, kudus dun sa mga lumalaban para sa tunay na demokrasya, who are entering this race, even if it's going to look very, very difficult for them. Having said that, you never know, right? No one saw Robin Hood Padilla topping the race in 2022 elections. Uh, no one saw back in the day Maro has stopping the Senate elections, although he spent a lot on the advertising, Mr. Palenque. Uh, we also saw Grace Bo out of nowhere from MTRCB chief suddenly becoming the top. I think few saw Cynthia Villar, by the way, just to remind you, uh, top the 2019 Senate election. So we don't know. Things could move. Things could get very interesting. I would say also Villeneuve, Senator Villeneuve coming up at number two in 2016 elections was also another big, big, big surprise. So so things could still move. But at least one thing we are seeing consistently is Erwin Tulfo cementing his position as a clear front runner and potentially going to be joined by another Tulfo. Now, the other thing that is interesting here is that 
Dahil ito si Nancy Bina, eh, patapos na yung kanyang diretsyong termino, dalawang termino na, just like Grace Wall. Now suddenly it looks like another Bina is in position to run for the highest office and that's Abigail Pinay. And some would say she's probably even the most capable uh, Pinay out there as far as the, as far as the well, siblings or, the, or the, rather the offsprings of the former uh, vice president is concerned. We can have more conversation about that. So things are quite interesting. And in fairness, Makay Nancy Bina, her reinvention throughout the years has been quite impressive. Not only in terms of branding, but also in terms of policy positioning and voting, including don't about Tanya about Kiboloy and other sensitive issues, don't say relevant agencies, including my committee, say Lalim ni Riza Hontiveros. Now, we'll discuss more about that, but it looks like not much has really, really changed. And while the number one to number four and five looks like more or less steady, from five onwards, it's extremely competitive. And there's a very good chance that my re election is. Like uh, Senator um, uh, Francis Tolentino, uh, mahirapan sila, and also others like uh, dating mga medyo shoo-in, katulad ni Gregory Honasan, mukhang medyo mahirapan din sila. Not to mention also Pam Aquino and Francis Pangilina are still, you know, at the edge no, of entering within the threshold of the competitive 15 to 20 people. Uh, for the um, for the top top position. So actually, Pangilina is number 14 to 18th, and Bam is 18 to 28. All right. So this is this is going to be tough. Very very tough. Now, if you look at the spread from number one, almost 60 percent expressing their uh, their preference for Tulfo, and then you look at the opposition figures of Pangilina, and it's barely 20 percent. So it's almost like three to one ratio. So three times people team. Three times more people uh, preferring people like Erwin Tulfo over seasoned, uh, you know, not only legislators, but all human rights activists, lawyers, among others, like Pangilin. And so, again, that also tells you something about the nature of our uh, political culture nowadays. But as I said, things could still change. I think the number one to five is more or less solidifying. Ang tanong lang dito is if Digong is going to run. And if Digong is going to run, is he going to go? for gold and or for broke because i think if the gong or bongo top the race next year that's gonna add a different different dynamic very very different dynamic all right okay pag-usapan natin ito mga kameta more uh, on monday among others in the meantime let me tell you this isa sa mga issues na sobrang 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 mainit uh over the past um few days Ay, itong issue ng Ayung Insol, which I want to discuss more also uh, in the coming days. Um, so, magkakaroon ng isang hearing dyan sa Senado, uh, led by Senator J.V. Hesito, kung saan pag-usapan ng issue ng fake news. Uh, so, yung mga mahilig magbuljakan, mahilig mag, uh, mag-claim na meron silang mga polvoronic videos, mga mahilig gumawa ng mga fake news, mga mga walang kwentang mga istorya para lang makuha ng views at maging relevant para lang kunyari may content or kunyari may conviction sa buhay o yan, yung mga ganon, medyo ingat-ingat kayo dyan diba? lalo yung mga epal-epal effect dyan at uh, kailangan magbagong buhay alright, so mukhang magkakaroon ng uh, isang masinsina na hearing ukul sa fake news but the important thing is that ang angulo ng mga fake news na yan mga kameta ay hindi lang uh, necessarily yung mga nagsispread ng mga kunyaring polvoronic videos or meron ako silang polvoronic videos na may uh, na siguro pinapagawa pa ng CG, CGI <laughs> pinapag gumagawa pa sila ng deepfake siguro no? um, <laughs> baka kulang yung budget nila dati kaya natagalan yung yung launching so siguro by April daw maging ready na yan so ay nako ay nako ay nako hintay natin yan anyway um, the thing here is Hindi lang ito about fake news. Ito ay ukol din dun sa mga bloggers na sasabihin na lang natin, mga bayaran. At hindi lang bayaran ng mga trapo, hindi lang bayaran ng mga potential criminal elements. Potentially, ito, pa, ito yung mga tao na potentially, or I'm just being nice by saying potentially, pero mukhang medyo obvious naman, na bayaran ng, ng isang bansa na nagbubuli sa atin sa West Philippine Sea. Obviously, meron tayong uh, influence operations, meron tayong disinformation campaign, meron tayong mga bayaran ng Harlika campaign, uh, kung saan, para 
palitan natin yung polisiya natin sa West Philippine Sea para hindi tayo mag-assert uh, ng ating claims sa West Philippine Sea uh, para maging mas mahina yung ating bansa, para maging uh, mas divided tayo. Uh, ang, uh, ang plano yata ng mga ito, mga bayaran ng China, is sasabihin nila, nako, nako, magkakaroon ng gyera, kaya huwag kayong makulit, kaya huwag nyo na idamay ang Amerika. Diba? So meron mga grupong ganun. Now, obviously, may mga, unfortunately, may mga tao na talagang misguided na yung kanilang uh, positioning ay basa sa ideoloya na 1960s pa at hindi, hindi pa masyadong na-update. Um, ang ba ito na nandikit sa ko? Hindi, kakaligo lang natin kanina. Hindi ka naman yun. Anyway, um, hindi lang, so, hindi natin tayong usapan, guys, yung mga, ano, uh, yung mga, yung mga, unfortunately, medyo oh, naka-download ng mga, questionable mga 1960s uh, Maoist mga ek-ek na ganyan. Hindi, hindi yung mga ganyan ha. Hindi yung mga na-stuck pa sa 1960-70s Cold War ha. Hindi, hindi yung mga yung pinag-usapan. Yung mga yan ay uh, bahala na lang sila. Kaya nga sila completely irrelevant dahil irrelevant yung kanilang thinking at positioning. Hindi sila nag-update. Sa akin palagay kung, kung kunyari gumising si Karl Marx at si Engels at nakita nila tong mga to sabi nila kakahiya nila yung mga ganitong tao. Dahil sila po ay eh, isang uh, clear, clear negation of the spirit of dialectical analysis, the spirit of constant research and updating na ikita natin sa mga works nila, Engels sa mga others. But anyway, mahabang usapan yan, ayaw natin pumunta dyan. No, no, hindi yung mga ganyan taong pinag-usapan natin mga kamets, ha? Hindi yung mga ganun. Um, I want to say something, but again, we're in the Holy Week, Holy uh, Day, uh, mag-Easter uh, na po, uh, shortly. Um, so, so we're gonna be nice, no? Dito. Ano ba yan? Yan. Tanggal. Okay. <laughs> Hindi ito. Um, ang pinag-usapan natin itong mga tao na clearly my script. Clearly my talking points. At obvious talaga yan eh. Unang-una, yung iba dyan, <coughs> location pa lang. <coughs> location pa lang, medyo. <coughs> um, pangalawa, kita natin yung talking points ng Chinese Embassy, talking points ng Chinese Foreign Ministry, talking points ng mga Chinese na propagandis na yeah, 50 Cent Club na based sa China, ay halos exactly yun din ang talking points sila. Halos exactly the same. Alright? Essentially yung Asia for Asians, which essentially means let China dominate this part of the world, yung CCC ng Amerika sa lahat ng mali nangyara sa mundo. Hindi ko sinasaya walang mali ang US. Ang daming mga maling ginawa ng Amerika all around the world, including sa 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 Afghanistan, sa Iraq, sa gitnang silangan. I can go on and on about the mistakes ng mga Western countries. Pero that doesn't excuse yung mga ginagawa, okay? yung ginagawa uh, ng China sa atin. Okay? Just because US did something wrong, that doesn't excuse Uh, the others like Russia or China to bully their smaller neighbors. Okay, let's be very clear about that. So, wag kayong magpa paano, apektos dun sa mga ano yan. No, no, no. So, the other one is clear yung parallel ng talking points sila at saka talking points ng Beijing-based officials or Beijing-based uh, essentially thought leaders and propagandists. Ito pang interesting. Uh, hindi ko alam sa inyo kung nakapunta kayo sa China and all pero dun sa mga iba sa atin nakapunta sa China actually bawal po ang Twitter bawal po ang Facebook Ang hirap po mag-connect ngayon sa Facebook at Twitter at saka mga ganyan accounts, mga Western tech companies sa China dahil napaka-strict yung kanilang regulation doon sa VPN nila. So kahit meron kang VPN, mahirapan ka pumasok. Ganun kagaling yung so-called Great Wall of China. So kung may mga iba dyan na bloggers na based sa China at ang ganda ng connection nila, ang ganda pa rin ng ano nila, pag-tweet nila, Facebook nila, magtanong ka, bakit ang ganda ng connection nila habang napaka-hirap na mag-post sa Twitter, Facebook kung base ka sa China even if meron kang VPN. Alam ko yan dahil marami akong kaibigan ng scholars and experts na, na base sa China na hindi pulvoronic mag Just to be clear, ha? just to be clear, kahit may disagreements ako sa China sa issue ng West Philippine Sea, marami naman akong alam sa, uh, marami naman mga bagay sa China na gusto gusto ko. I love their culture and civilization. I love their um, their history, there's so much amazing stuff about China, I love their hard work, their work ethic, marami tayo mga kaibigan, mga Chino throughout the years I keep in touch with, with mga experts and friends there um, you know, may agad uh, I'm keeping in touch also dito sa mga latest na pangyara, my goodness alam niyo yung phone na Xiaomi alam niyo yung sh- phone na Xiaomi guys may, meron na silang kotse gumawa na sila ng kotse so meron ng Xiaomi car ngayon guys Saan ka pa, di ba? May Xiaomi car na ngayon. 
At uh, itong Xiaomi Cornian, well, medyo may kamukha siyang kotse na itago na lang natin sa pangalan na Porsche. <laughs> Pero maganda pa rin eh. At yung 1 to 100 niya, mahuwa niya daw niya sa 3 seconds. Obviously, minsan medyo, you know, you take with a grain of salt yung mga claims sila sa mga Chinese cars. But guys, they look good. They look, um, they look very affordable, very interesting. And kahit sabihin natin Japex, anong kayo? Sabihin ng copycat ng portion, all of that. But still, guys, ngayon, medyo ganun ng China. Pero give it 3, 4, 5 years, kaganda yung mga coaches nila. At uh, yung BYD ng China, next level na, napakaganda. So, uh, gusto ko lang ilabas ito. Kasi, grabe yung mga kulay ng coaches nila. Mga Tiffany, Meta Purple. Sabi ko, ibang klase. Oh. Ito, oh, Xiaomi. So, you can see guys, I constantly keep in touch with developments in China. Dahil hindi ako hater, I, I, I appreciate China. I, I love their determination. Oh, kahit sabi natin kumukopya sila. Oh, oh di ba? Meta color pa. Oh. Meta color. Oh, oh, imagine mo. Kung hindi lang, alam mo kung wala lang ako concern sa privacy ko at sa mga datos ko. Eh, no? Kasi syempre, yun ang problema sa mga ganyang kotse. Uh, I mean, actually, any modern car you buy right now, pag kinonect mo yung phone mo and all of that, potentially makompromise ka. Lalo itong mga Chinese car, very, very yan yan eh. Very high-tech yan, in fairness. And, uh, and uh, if you look at them, they, they, um, talagang super connected sila, smart car sila. Diba? So, good luck sa mga datos mo yan. See, I mean, look at the, look at the colors. And look at the design. Yes, it looks like Taycan. I mean, which is my ultimate, um, crush car, if I can put it that way. If, if there's one car na sobrang gusto gusto ko na EV, hindi Tesla yung mga ganun. Loves na yung mga sa akin. Um, uh, Siyempre, love natin ang BMW and all of that, but but take on of Porsche is the best. So, this one really looks like one. So, again, pwede natin pagtawan ng China and all of that, but guys, imagine mo ba't yung Xiaomi nila na phone, nakakagawa sila ng ganang kotse. So, so, what I'm saying is that, in theory, I'm all good with trading with China, with getting investment from China. Kung titignan mo yung trends sa Laos, titignan mo yung trends sa Indonesia, ang ganda ng ginawa ng China. But, hindi naman tayo ututo. Yan ang difference natin dun sa iba. So, ang problema sa Pilipinas, guys, is uh, Toyota Sop. Mahal naman kasi, guys, ito, ito $30,000 ang presyo niya. Yung, you wanna get a Porsche, uh, it's gonna be like, like what? 10 times the price or 8 times the price. But anyway, what I'm saying is, Ang problema sa Pilipinas is either sobrang anti-China, halos racist and prejudicial, at sobrang pro-US, um, or sobrang anti-US na nagbubulag-bulagan dun sa mga problema sa China at masyadong nire-romanticize yung China. Like for instance, yung project sa Indonesia na Bandung, Jakarta, high railway projects, sobrang overpriced, sobrang tagal, etc. But hindi dapat tayo hater. So, which brings us to Itong issue natin ngayon. So, clearly, may mga bayaran. Clearly, may script. Clearly, may plano sila na tatakotin tayo. Dalawa lang naman sa estilo nila eh. Sasabihin nila, Nako, huwag kayong mag, uh, ano, huwag kayong lumaban masyado dyan sa West Philippines eh, kasi ang mangyari dyan is magkakaroon ng gyera. Which is, yan ang pulvoronic ng pag-iisip. Hello, we took China to international court. Wala namang gyera nangyari. Hello, dalawang taon na tayo lumalaban sa China. Wala naman nangyari gyera. Okay, water cannon is bad. But let's not jump into uh, you know, conclusions right away. Ang Pilipinas ay marami pang options. We can actually go for using bigger ships, warships. Uh, we can you know, bring in our allies to do joint patrols in the areas, etc. So, huwag tayong masyadong magpatakot. Uh, nananakot kasi sila eh, yung mga bayaran dyan. Pangalawa naman, ang gagawin nila ay sabihin na, hindi, hindi, dahil sa ginagawa natin, hindi natin makukuha yung mga investments sa China. So, may mga ibang mga bayaran dyan ang pinapost nila. Tignan mo yung Indonesia, napakaganda yung country nila dahil mabait sila sa China. And except, you know, the reason Indonesia is doing well is because they're dealing with, we are getting investments from Japan, they're getting investments from Netherlands, they're getting investments from many places. The same thing with Vietnam. Lahat ng mga countries na yun, umasayin sa so hindi dahil sa China lang. Umasayin sa so sila dahil kumakuha sila ng investments from all around the world. So they're doing well 360 degrees. And lahat ng mga bansa na yan, katulad ng sinabi natin, ay lumaban na sa China dati pa. So nung nag ng China na hindi sila, ano, hindi sila uh, tatay lang, may, pwede madugtarta lang, then they began to, to respect us. Now, going back to this, as I said, 
dalawang aspeto nito eh. Unang-una, unang-una, kailangan talaga natin investigate, guys. Kailangan talaga natin investigate ano itong gentleman's agreement na sinisabi ni ex-human rights lawyer. Ito si Harry Harry. Because potentially against sa ating, hindi lang national interest, but potentially unconstitutional, and I'm not gonna use the word, you know what you, word I'm gonna use. So, ito si, ano, uh, ito si President Marcos Jr. They have to investigate this. And most importantly, the Senate has to investigate this. Okay, wait lang, may mga, may mga... Okay, tanggal natin. May mga troll dito, umayos kaya, Holy Week. Um, balikan natin ito, guys. First of all, there has to be a very, 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 very clear investigation. Ano itong gentleman's agreement na yan? Because iba yung sinisabi ni Bato, iba yung sinisabi ni, ni I don't know, Digong, kung may sinisabi pa siyang matino, iba yung sinisabi ni Harry, iba yung sinisabi... So we have to investigate what's going on here. Pangalawa, we also have to keep in mind very clearly na wala tayong choice. We have to stand our ground until China realizes na hindi tayo push over. But having said that, all right, so first, there has to be very serious investigations. Hindi lang sa mga fake news peddlers, pero dun sa mga amo nila. Hindi amo nila sa China, yung mga amo nila dito, or yung mga middleman nila dito. Dapat rin may investigation dun sa mga questionable deals or gentleman's agreement or whatever agreement na naganap nung panahon ng dating administration. There has to be a very thorough, comprehensive, and objective investigation. Hindi hater of us. Hindi racist na anti-China ganun. No, no, no. Um, but at the same time, we have to be very clear, guys. Hin- what? <laughs> hindi naman pwede sabihin na... Kasi... Pag di tayo lumaban para sa uh, para sa Iowa Winshall, parang binigay mo na sa kanila yan eh. Parang ganun na lang. Parang nag-give up ka na lang. And next thing you know, lahat na lang na ating karagatan, lahat ng ating fish resources, lahat ng ating oil and gas dyan sa West Plains, yeah, good luck na lang. Ang mawawala sa atin yung sarili natin, res- respeto natin sa sarili natin, mawawala natin dangal ng ating bayan, at mawawala ang billions of dollars, if not trillions of dollars of resources. So, sobrang mahalaga guys na talagang pag-aralan na mabuti ng Senado. Yes, we need a serious Senate uh, hearing. So, I'm calling upon J.V. Ejercito at saka ibang senador dyan na not to only investigate itong mga fake news peddlers, mga bayaran na yan. Now, yung iba naman sobrang obvious na uh, kailangan ba natin pangalanan. Um, uh, but, uh, beyond yung mga major, minor bloggers, whatever, kailangan din ang pag-aralan na mabuti. Ano ba tong ginagawa ng China na disinformation? At ano itong mga sikreto or gentleman's agreement na meron sila na walang pirma, walang signature, walang formal agreement, walang treaty, walang MOA, MOU, walang ganun. Kailangan talaga investigate na ng Senate. Hindi pwede investigate lang yung mga trolls. Oh, alam ko, nai si JV dahil tinutrol, troll, troll siya yung mga nagtitrol sa amin ng 5-6 years. Okay, good yun, sir. Go after them. But just to remind everyone, Oh, yung mga iba dyan na ngayon bilang tapang-tapangan na nang nanood ng Gilas, Pilipinas, nag West Philippines Sea, anong sinasabi niyo ng panahon ni Digong? Okay? Anong sinasabi niyo sa China? Excuse me. At saka yung mga yung bilang naging pahiro-hiro dyan sa West Philippines Sea, oh, anong ginagawa niyo ng panahon ni Digong? Yun lang sasabihin ko eh. Okay? Now, anong sinasabi mo? Sir Son, kung ayaw mo dito, di umalis ka. Di ka naman na... So, so yeah, there has to be an investigation, not only in terms of disinformation campaign, not only in terms of bayaran, whether minor, major, whatever, vlogger, but kailangan din investigate na mabuti itong sinasabi, guys, na um, gentleman's agreement. That's very, very important. Very, very important. And from there, we have to make it clear. Anong, anong, anong ang strategy talaga ni Marcos Jr.? Now, in fairness kay Marcos Jr., maayos yung kanyang statement na Filipinos do not yield uh we we are for democracy i sorry we are for the diplomacy but we're not gonna you know you know essentially give up on our national interest maganda maganda yung speech uh, kung sino nagsulat ng speech ni BBM in fairness sa kanya maayos at in fairness din uh, kay kay president marcos junior for openly also mentioning na if ever man may ganyan na gentleman's agreement na questionable sa pagitan ni Digong at sa pagitan ng China, he's, he's gonna rescind it. My problem though is, two, 
Unang-una, hindi pwede sabihin mo na kung anong ginawa ni Digong kung mali. O, oh, hindi ko nagagawin. Hindi. Dapat investigate natin kung may mali talaga nangyari. Dapat talaga i-check natin yan. Alright? You cannot just say, oh, baliwala na lang. Hindi pwede yan. Okay? Huwag oh, nila nandama yung mga ghostwriters. Hindi pa ghostwriter tawag siya. Mayroon nga siyang... Kaya nga may PCO eh, may Presidential Communications Office eh. Hindi naman ghostwriter mga yan. Trabaho talaga nila gumawa ng magandang speech. Alright. Um, so, bigyan naman natin ng magandang ano, uh, magandang, uh, cre- let's give credit where credit is. Oh, pangalawa, BBM also has to be very clear. Uh, ano tong sinasabi niya na tutulungan tayo ng mga aliado natin? Ano tong sinasabi niya na may, meron tayong mga package of countermeasures? Now, of course, naintindihan ko na may mga bagay na hindi pwede sabihin in public that for tactical and strategic reasons. Tactical reasons because, of course, you want to always have the element of surprise and you also want to have your options, a range of options open to you. Strategic also, of course, wala kang gustong sabihin na potentially mag-undermine ng mga aliado mo because let's not forget, ang US, Australia, Japan, may sarili din silang interest when it comes to China. It is true na meron tayong convergence of interest with these countries in fighting against bullying sa West Philippine Sea because ayaw rin nila na mag-dominate ng South China and West Philippine Sea ang China, ng China. But at the same time, yung mga bansa na yan, may sarili din silang bilateral relationship and complications with China. So I understand for strategic and tactical reasons, for intelligence reasons, for bilateral strategic relations reasons, BBM cannot say everything. But at the same time, I hope we'll see and we will hear and we'll get to know in one way or another na hindi puro mga matapang na salita lang ito or hindi lang ito yung mga rhetorical reassurances, hindi lang ito yung mga usual na ginagawa ng U.S., um, no, no, you need to see something different, something special. So some of the things I want to see is whether anong klase mga barkong gagamitin natin sa mga susunan resupply mission sa Ayong Inshol, anong mga diplomatic measures na gagawin natin, are we going to openly threaten uh, the potential for withdrawing our ambassadors or downgrading our diplomatic ties? Anong mga strategic countermeasures katulad ng, let's say, dito ako sa Cordilleras, right? Uh, ang China po ay nagre-rely sa Pilipinas sa nickel. Uh, and some of the very, very important uh, resources. Are we gonna also leverage that? Right? Because actually, ang, ang, yung mga SM ganun, oh, dependent sila sa China. Pero sa totoo lang, pagdating sa mga strategic uh, mga minerals and all, mas dependent pang China sa atin. Eh. Kasi kailangan nila yung mga resources natin to make some of their high-tech stuff. Which, by the way, they sell back to us in finished form with 10 times the price. But anyway, mga bang usapan yun, yung mga neocolonial economics na ginawa din ng mga Western countries sa atin before. But going back to this, you want to also see, ano ba talagang uh, sinisabi ng, ni, ni BBM in terms of tutulungan tayo ng Amerika? Because so far, correct me if I'm wrong, ano bang binigay sa atin ng Amerika na malaking armas na pwede ipang tapat natin sa China? May binigay ba silang maganda sa atin ng mga F-16 fighters? May binigay ba sila sa atin ng magandang F-15 X fighters? May offer ba sila sa atin ng training or something na down the road? Potentially, we can have F-35 fighters, not F-22 kasi sa kanila talaga yan. May binigay na strategic missile systems pa ang US sa atin. High Mars, Patriot missile systems pa sa atin ang US. May, may, uh, so, yun ang tanong ko ngayon. Ano ang, if ever magbibigay ng weapon systems ang, ang Amerika sa Pilipinas, how decisive those weapon systems will be? And under what conditions? And in exchange for what? Are they going to demand us to give them more access? Etka sa Batanes, sa Cagayan, ganon. So, uh, it's good to hear na meron tayong mga aliado and supporters because after all, the reason why ang China ay natakot na, na to escalate it, kaya water cannon pa rin ginagamit, hindi cannon, is because ayaw nila magkaroon sila ng direct clash with the US. Pero kung tutulungan naman tayo ng US, ano ba talagang tulong na ito? Ito ba yung mga usual na binibigay nila over the past 30, 40, 50 years which did not make the Philippines a, a world-class military? Because kung titignan mo, lahat ng mga matitinong armas na kinukuha natin recent years ay galing sa Korea. Gal- yung mga warships natin galing sa Korea. Yung F-A-50s natin galing sa Korea. Na hindi naman super fighter, more upgraded trainer. Yung missile systems natin galing naman sa India. Yung submarines na gusto natin bilhin, potentially galing sa France. Right? Or Spain. Right? Or baka Korea rin. Ito yung tatlo. So, Nasaan ang Amerika dyan? Nasaan US dyan? Now, of course, maganda na sinabi ng ibang aliado natin na the mutual defense treaty is very clear that they'll intervene. Of course, maganda yan. But before talking about them intervening directly, intervening directly in an event of conflict, 
Sana naman may makuha din tayo ng mga mat- matitiyo ng armas na pwede natin gamitin for self-defense reasons. Advanced fighter jets, advanced missile systems, strategic weapon systems, mga ganun. So, yun guys ang mga dapat pag-usapan natin next week. Again, I, let's keep it here. Medyo napakabang usapan natin. Don't worry guys, hindi naman tayo galit. Ang sinasabi ko lang, sana magkakaroon ng tamang pagsusuri sa lahat ng mga bagay na pinag-usapan natin. Hindi pwede marites-marites lang itong gentleman's agreement na yan. Kailangan talaga natin research Kailangan talaga natin investigate what was this gentleman's agreement. Did it violate our constitution? Have certain people acted in contra- in contrary to our national interest? Should there be legal and criminal charges? Right? That's one. B. Meron bang active disinformation campaign ng isang Uli sa West Philippine Sea. Sino yung mga tao nila? Anong kailangan natin gawin? Lahat na yan dapat titignan natin. At pangatlo, kung tutulangan tayo ng mga aliado natin, ano ba talaga mga bibigyan nila sa atin? Anong mga armas? Uh, under what conditions? At anong kapalit nun? Because there's, there's no free lunch in international affairs, just to be clear about this. So yun po yung mga bagay na dapat pag-usapan natin. Alright? Ayan naman yung mga, yung mga, oh, yung mga bayaran. Hello, ang Ukraine po ang nakakuha ng 100 billion dollars in military aid, all right? At ang Ukraine po ay hindi ma- it's not even a US treaty ally and they're getting that much aid, all right? So actually using the Ukraine model is quite problematic. Ang problema sa Ukraine is land sila, land country sila. So yung border nila with Russia is very near. And Russia which lost hundreds of thousands of people because dictator yung kanilang system, dictatorship. nagtatapon lang sila ng tao diyan sa giyera nila sa yung yun meat grinder na tinitawag na sobrang so please lang you know actually the Ukraine example is not really the best example because Ukraine is not even a treaty ally and yet it got 100 billion dollars of aid from US and others and they're gonna still get tens of billions ang Pilipinas kaya not even the Philippines is a treaty ally and by the way we don't have a land border with China so it's gonna be a totally different ball game but anyway I'll keep it there mga kameta thank you very much again sa mga nahiling sa atin so this is just a preview of God willing, discussions we want to have next week. Uh, 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 Siyempre, weekend and all of that. But uh, I hope to also reach out to Justice Carpio. We'll have hopefully an interview with him. I did an interview with him, pero dun sa show natin, View from Manila, so dun sa Signal TV, TV5. Uh, abangan niyan. But I hope to also have a podcast with him. I'm also looking at talking to some other experts also based in the U.S. And down the road, to be honest, guys, I want to also talk to people based in China and other places. As long as sigurado tayo na... in good faith ang conversations natin. All right? On that note, thank you very much, guys. Maraming salamat. Advance Happy Easter and uh, have a blessed Sabbath day and Easter day tomorrow. Salamat po. God bless.